From the downtown to the uptown to the suburbs A common heartbeat's down inside of you and me And no matter where we go This city's in our souls Who we are keeps us connected to this place And I love it, living local It's the only kind of air I want to breathe I'm living local cause it's where I Welcome back to another episode of Made in Northern New York. I'm Olivia Grant. And I'm Josh Bond. Welcome to Clayton. That's where we are right now for our episode on the St. Lawrence River. There is so much to do in this area that we actually had to split this episode into two parts. So the first thing that we did is we stopped by the TI Museum to learn all about the history of the beautiful area. Then we stopped in with Mike Hazelwood at the Woodboat Brewery and learned his process on making beer. One of the awesome things that you can do on the St. Lawrence River is scuba dive and we learned how to do it. It was my first time, but not yours. No, not my first time. So why don't you come on, follow us, and check it out. Let's go. Hey everyone, ABC 50's Josh Bond here, hanging out with Tom Humberstone, the president of the Thousand Islands Museum. Thank you so much for sitting down with us. Well, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. So Tom, can you give me a little history about the TI Museum uh, and how long it's been around? Uh, it was actually a group of people got together in 1963 and 64, and they formed the museum. It was July the 4th, 1964. And we were at the town hall where the opera house is today. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we moved here, we bought this building. And uh, probably we've been here probably close to 15 years now, I would say. What does the Thousand Islands Museum do for the community of Clayton? We represent the history of the area. Uh, from the, uh, we had a famous decoy maker, Sam Denny here. Uh, we've got a lot of history as far as the islands, Calumet Island, and a lot of old hotels that were here. Uh, there was a Battle of War of 1812 fought down at uh, Bartlett Point. So there's a lot of history along the river. The river is a very famous and historical area. There's a lot of, uh, early on, there was a lot of big hotels, the Frontenac Hotel over on one of the islands, and a lot of the wealthy would come and spend their summers or their falls. A lot of them were hunting camps, like Dark Island down toward Alex Bay uh, and Chippewa Bay. That was a hunting camp owned by a gentleman by the name of Bourne, Singer Sewing Machine. And then naturally you have uh, Bolt Castle. So there's a lot of, lot of real history along the uh, river with all the islands and the people that used to come up here. There used to be a train used to come right into Clayton to take the people to the different hotels and to the different islands out of different areas around the country. I mean, there was a lot of famous people that did frequent the area. Can you give us a little background about some of the different artifacts that you guys have here at the museum? Uh, we have, that we, on hand all the time, we have uh, the Sam Denny decoy collection. Uh, we have Frink plows were made here. Frink was a famous plow maker that made many of the plows and invented a lot of the plows that are even used today. Uh, we also have the, th the boats, the St. Lawrence River skiffs. Uh, we have a lot of guides here, we have, uh, and we have representation of the guides. We have what we call a resource library, which we're really proud of. What that does is that represents anyone that lived in this community. We have history on them. So if your family was here in the 1890s or whatever, you could come in here and look and you will find information on them. And the ladies are back there now, what they do is each day they uh, get the newspapers and local papers and they go through and they look for names and they cut out these uh, clippings and put them in. So when you come in, it follows the history from when your family was first here and it follows it all the way up. I mean, we have people come that have moved out of the area that come in here that are you know, it's amazing what they can find. And a lot of libraries send them here because we have such information. You have artifacts, you have your history guides over here. We have this mantra called Living Local. What does Living Local mean for you and the Thousand Islands Museum here in Clayton? Well, we talked a little earlier. The way of life here is very laid back compared to many areas. Uh, we've got not only the St. Lawrence River and Lake Ontario, this whole area is filled with small lakes and places where people can get away. Uh, we're a little over two hours from the Adirondacks. 
So this area affords you the ability to get to a lot of places in New York. Everybody that lives in New York thinks of New York City or out of New York thinks of New York City. And when you get in the North Country, they're amazed how beautiful it is. We have the Clayton Decoy and Wildlife Art Show. When I try to get exhibitors, I ask them, have you ever been to the St. Lawrence River? And they said, no. And I said, make sure when you come, you come up for a vacation because it's going to be one of the most beautiful areas you're ever going to be on. It's beautiful, it's historic, and we always say, come up, vacation, and yes, there happens to be a decoy show. You mentioned about the decoy show. Do you guys have that coming up soon? Yes, this is our 50th anniversary, and it'll be next uh, Friday and Saturday, 9 to 6, 9 to 4. And we're well known around. We're kind of proud of our show because many of the exhibitors that come to our show get us good, no, uh, other exhibitors. I do other shows, and they always say, no one treats us better than your show. And we're kind of proud of that. And that's from the volunteers that we have that are friendly and are nice to people. You gotta be nice to people, and they are. That's what it's all about. I mean, <laughs> if, you're in the, if you're in the business of communicating and, and history, you have to be nice to people. And, that's, and I think we are. I, I'm really proud of the volunteers that work here. They're very good with people, very knowledgeable, a lot more knowledgeable than I am. Many of them grew up and were raised in this community, so they know an awful lot about it. One thing we do have that is unique is if uh, over in the, we have tartan, and it's right from Scotland, mm -hmm. and it's registered. No one else can use or sell that tartan. And the lady that set that up was a, uh, was a play, uh, lady by the name of uh, Helen Cobb. And she had a shop. And she used to sell tartan, made in Scotland. And she said, we should have this. And we do. It represents many things, the river and the way it's set up. And it's beautiful. It's expensive. But when people come in here, you'd be amazed the amount of people that will buy it because they know they can't buy that in any other place. We're open uh, Tuesday through Friday, 10 to 4. We are, we're open on Saturdays, but we're having a little trouble getting volunteers, but we will be open some Saturdays. Or you can call the museum and we'll take you out through an, a, by appointment. It's quite a nice area, really. I mean, it's, it's unique. Uh, I've been fortunate, my wife and I have traveled through all 50 states. And when you get through, they're nice. Been to Yellowstone, been to all the different parks. It's hard to beat this area. And when you get home, you're happy to get home because it's, it's nice. It's laid back. And that's what I like about it. It's laid back. Up next, we learn all about how the Woodboat Brewery brews this delicious beer.